This past Saturday night, we had two different shows with two extreme situations. In one, on one hand, we have Amanda Serrano having to pull out of her main event down in Puerto Rico because of an issue with her eye while she's in the dressing room. On the other hand, Ray Ford comes back cardiac kid style with a come from behind knockout in round 12. Both at its best and at its worst, boxing really is the theater of the unexpected. It sure is, Paulie. You couldn't have said it any better. I'm George Shakovic with the champs, Paulie Malinaji, Chris Algieri, the champion Hall of Famer, ESPN analyst, Tim Bradley. What a night, Tim, Saturday night. I mean, Paulie said it right. You had everything you could want in boxing. You had the, the inspiring drama of Ray Ford and the bizarreness of the Amanda Serrano, Serrano pulling out of a fight. But let's start with the Jersey fighter who became champion, a fight that you caught. I'm from Jersey, so anytime I see a New Jersey fighter, man, Ray Ford, seven seconds behind on two cards, gets a dramatic knockout to become featherweight champion of the world. Tim? It was unbelievable. It really was. Um, and I almost felt like it, I could see that it almost happening. Um, towards the middle rounds, I start seeing Ford coming on. He was, uh, he was sitting in the pocket and decided to go forward. Um, he explained after the fight the reason why he was going for it was because he felt that he was a better inside fighter, one. Two, he didn't have the legs to move around because he had a tough weight cut. But he was just just better technically on the inside um, and comfortable. And I give the credit to Coach uh, Anthony because he wasn't always like that. I mean, some of he had some couple of close calls early in his career, uh, also getting that draw. Uh, was a guy that was pressuring him. He wasn't comfortable inside the pocket. But Coach Anthony, just it's still in just the basic fundamentals in him, man, and getting ready to be able to operate in the pocket the way he did and catch and shoot and and, and push back Komatov and make him fight uh, and put, push a puncher backwards, you know, uh, and make him fight off his back foot. I, I thought it was a brilliant game plan and a, and a great switch. But the only way you can do that, man, um, honestly, because he took some big shots early, Ford did, Um you literally got to love pain more than you love yourself. Um, he took some big punches early on. He bit down on his mouthpiece. He said to himself, well, I'm still here. Uh, I'm going to take charge. I'm going to press forward. And, and and it was the smartest thing he can do. Um, and if he didn't have his corner, I'm telling you right now, I don't think he would have, I don't think he would have been able to pull it off. I really don't. Um, but it was great to see Ford getting a chance to win this world championship that he's been working for his entire career. Plus, you know, silence, silence all the doubters, all the haters. You know, he gets to silence, silence them as well. And uh, he needs to understand that he is no longer the uh, the hunter. He is now going to be hunted. So he needs to stay on top of his game moving forward. Chris, uh, Ford is from Camden, New Jersey. The last fighter from Camden to be, to be a champion was the, the great Dwight Muhammad Kwawi, who's in the Hall of Fame. But Chris, what, what did you see in that fight, because to my eyes as a fan, it looked like Ford could have made that fight easier, but it went the way it went. Well, I've actually called a bunch of, of Ford's fights in the past, like the whole handful of them, and he that was a different guy. You know, he, 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 he showed different levels to his game, different layers, things that he's obviously been working on at the gym. Um, you know, and to Tim's point, him and I actually, we were calling, calling the fight together for top rank. I was on the international. He was in the main call. We, we literally pulled back on our chairs and looked at each other, and we were like, Ford's coming on. Because early on, Otterbeck was very good. He put on a great performance as well. He's a big puncher. He caught, he caught Ford a bunch of times early on and made Ford realize what you just said, Tim, is that he's actually better off pushing the puncher back. Otterbeck is a good puncher, but he punches wide, even on the inside. And Ray, with the speed advantage, the shorter punch advantage, it actually worked much better for him to go forward and push the puncher back. Not realizing that Otterbeck can actually box as well. And there are certain rounds where Otterbeck got on his bike and was able to box very, very well on the outside, using his jab, making, using that European push-pull style to make even, even someone as sharp and as fast as Ray miss wildly at times. I mean, it, it was a story of a couple different fights. These guys really switched roles multiple times throughout the fight. And then Ray, I saw an interview afterwards, he goes, he's like, I knew I was going to get him. I knew I was hurting him. And it looked like that. And that's when, when me and Tim looked at each other and were like, he's coming on. Because there were certain times in those, those internal exchanges on the inside, you could just see Ray was just getting bigger each and every exchange. You could see he was getting stronger. He was becoming the puncher. I actually said that on, on air. He's actually becoming the puncher, the guy going forward, walking Odebeck down. And Odebeck has now switched sides and is going into the boxing, boxing mode. And then that last round, I mean, listen, you got to give it to Odebeck. He came out there. He, tried to, he didn't know he was ahead. 
He tried to fight the fight. He tried to keep going. He tried to win the round, and that's actually what eventually cost him. And there were seven seconds left. He was down on two, two, two scorecards, and Ray roared back to stop Odebeck. And actually, he was a good stoppage. I don't, I don't argue with the stoppage. Nope. His team didn't ru- argue with the stoppage. He was very hurt. You saw his legs were just betraying him. Um, it was becoming one of those situations late in a fight where it could be dangerous for a fighter. So I think it was actually an excellent stoppage and, and well-deserved win by, by, by Ray, Ray Savage. I mean, awesome fight. That's how you win a world title, man. That's how you break onto the world stage. We're going to be we're gonna be talking about this kid. Some big fights coming soon. Just got to let that, that nasty cut under his eye heal first. You turn him into a wrestler champ. Ray Savage. Yeah. <laughs> Macho <laughs> man. Ray, Ray Savage. Ray Savage Ford. Man, what a what a, a storybook kind of uh, championship effort here by by uh, Ford. You know, uh, you know, this is fight took as as a champ Chris was just mentioning. It took several different turns of evolutionary s- standards. Like, you know, again, not to compare it to the great Leonard and, uh, and Hearns fight, but really, and they, you, know, you, they got, was, you was, got the puncher against the boxer, then, the, then the, and the puncher turns into a boxer, and the, and the boxer has to come chase the puncher, and then you have this this unbelievable stoppage at the end, and then you come to find out Ford was down on two cards hopelessly, and you're just thinking, wow, this is kind of storybook kind of stuff, you know? Uh, really, when you think about this. If you look at the small details that you think about after, if the referee calls that slip a knockdown, Komatov probably gets out of round 12 and wins the title by a split decision or majority decision because he's up by three points going into the last round. He can afford to be knocked down once. And if he, that, that slip is called a knockdown, which it could have been. I mean, it was right there. It could have yep. been easily called a knockdown. You know, then you get the time for the mandatory eight count and you get the time for the referee to brush your gloves off. Maybe he even tells Ford to go to a neutral corner because I, I don't even think he went to a neutral corner. And by the time that happens... Gomatov may be recovered enough to get through the round and win on split decision. Instead, when it's a slip, you got to get up right away and you got to get back into the fight right away. And then presence of mind for Ford, credit to him to just go for it. Go for it all right there because he knew his man was hurt. And, and then was, even there then... There was seven seconds. And, so and then even then, Gomatov could have took a knee then on the ropes too instead of turning around. I mean, just crazy. All the things that could have happened, could have happened in those final 20 seconds in so many different directions that would have altered the result of that fight. Crazy, crazy ending. One of, I think this is uh, going to be one of the fights that we remember in 2024. Still early, but this is one you got to put in the memory bank when we talk about better fights of the year, most dramatic fights of the year, and even KO stoppages of the year. And actually, to your point, if you did some scoring math, Komatov could have gone down twice. He could have lost a three-point round. It would have been a draw. Yeah, yeah. Three-point round, he could have been a draw. Yeah, right. those judges a draw is still better than a loss, right? <laughs> yeah. Crazy, crazy. You got a lot of people complaining about the stop, but just saying it was too premature. You um, can't turn around, Tim. You can't turn around. Oh, no, no. When you turn around, especially when you're hurt, and you and he was defenseless. Yeah, like, I mean, look, yep. Tim, down. I don't want to cut you off. I don't want to cut you off. Give me, yeah. let, let me cut you off one second. If the guy turns around and there's 15 seconds, what, seven, seven, eight seconds left, he, what is the ref going to do? Stop it. Oh, you know what? Turn back around, guy. He's, yeah, the yeah, ref's yeah. helping you yeah. then. The ref is not allowed to help you. All right, go ahead, Tim. Sorry. And, and on top of that, he was defenseless, and... You, you, it's called abandoning the fight. If you abandon the fight, if you turn your back like that, especially when you're hurt, the referee has no other choice but to step in and stop the match. So I understand that people's complaining about the the, the, the actual uh, ending of the fight, the stoppage. No, I mean, what else? What what would you do? I mean, thinking you being the referee and the first knockdown during that round, it it was it was it wasn't called a knockdown. Called a knockdown. It wasn't called a knockdown. However, he did for did. Throw him off of him yeah. and slam him on the ground. He gets up. He's hurt. He's staggering all over the place. Then he runs. I mean, it was the perfect stoppage, I think, in my eyes. I think Charlie did a great job there. I, I have no no quarrel or no, anything uh, to argue about with the stoppage. Um, but this brings me back to that adage or, or that saying that we have, take it from the champion. I know no one was a champion in this fight, but... It's not. It's not meant. It's meant for fighters to understand and have that type of mentality going into a championship fight, taking it from the champion. It has nothing to do with the judges at whatsoever. But that's how you do it. You know, when the title, when the titles are on the line, when all the stakes are on the line, man. Look, you got to step in there. You got to understand that Ford was in ter- enemy territory. You know, they didn't win the first bid. He was in enemy territory. So. For him to step up, step out tired, completely tired, legs drained, you know, and do what he did, that's something special. That's a special fighter. And the only way you can do that is, is that you got to have something deep inside, people. Yep. Something deep inside, an animal, a beast inside. And Ford showed that dog because I asked them in the fighter meeting. I asked these guys, do you have dog? And, you know, some people might say, well, 
Tim, what do you expect them to say? You know, each of them said differently. And I looked into his eyes and I said to myself, damn, I got a lot of similarities with this young man. I was too kicked out of school in second grade. I too was kicked out of school in fourth grade. He has to have that dog in him. No doubt about it. And to hear his trainer, Anthony, say, Coach Anthony say that he does, Tim. And to hear him during that broadcast say, they asked if we had the dog, you need to bring it out. And to see what yeah. he did. Damn, what a special, special fighter he is. Timmy, he's from Camden, Tim. Are you familiar with Camden? There you go. And and, and Tim, you know something. Are you familiar with Camden? Guys, you know something else, something else too. I don't want to keep going back to Leonard and Hearns, but you kind of got to in this situation too. You got the don't you're blowing his son with Angelo Dundee. Between eleven and twelve, coach was it Coach Anthony's name is Tim? This guy deserves a lot of praise. This guy deserves a lot of praise because the the instructions he he gave for between eleven and twelve were so on point. You get you talk about making the most of that minute. He gave he served. Certain motivational things or the tactics, whatever, everything he put into that one minute, it was really exactly what Ford needed to go out to the 12th round and give it that all that he had burning inside of him, man. I mean, terrific, terrific uh, performance by both the trainer and the fighter, and and he deserves a... We, we need his... Tim, what's his full name? Was Coach Anthony's Anthony's first name was Anthony's last name? Oh. Cool. It's it's, uh, it's Anthony Rodriguez. Hey, well, Anthony Rodriguez deserves deserves the credit, man, because in the corner Ford had that was a motivational yeah. corner and, in between eleven. And, and 12. I'll tell you, uh, if you really really watch the nuances of that fight, and I was, and actually scored that fight each and every round. It was it was really it was a difficult fight to score because a lot of the rounds where Ray had a great last minute, he had a really bad yep. first two minutes where he wasn't yeah. doing much. So the judges were grading it right because he was giving away too much of the early portions portions of rounds, coming on long, coming on strong late. And to Coach Anthony's point, uh, to his credit rather, knowing that hey, listen, a lot of those a lot of those rounds could have gone to Odebeck because he won the beginning rounds. Even though you came on strong at the end, even though you came back to the corner feeling good about what happened, you lost the round, bud. So now in round 12, we got to go for it. But both guys went for it in round 12. Odebeck didn't hold on. He was boxing really well in 10 and 11. Round 12, he went out there to put a, put a staple, put a, put a statement down, and, and became the puncher once again. And that's ultimately what got him caught. He could have moved around the ring and won. But again, they didn't know that. And to your point, uh, Tim, being a champion, you got to beat the champion. We got to take the belt. The belt's on the line. There is no champion. Both guys went for it. You got to take it. But Ray came out on top, man. What a fight. It's, it's, it's interesting you say that. You know, I saw it differently in a way where you said, like, oh, you know, Odebeck won that round because he was a busier fighter. And he, but. Man, Ford was landing the more effective punches, man. And I knew it was going to have an effect on the, in, in, uh, on the back end of the fight, man. Um, so although you had Komatov winning those moments and winning those rounds, he wasn't winning the freaking war, no. in my opinion. I, I just felt that, like, sooner or later, Ford was going to catch up with him, man. And Because I saw little by little, he was allowing him to work. He was allowing him to blow off some more steam. Go ahead, blow off some steam. Get yourself tired even more. And he was placing these small body shots on the inside. And you can see uh, Komatov kind of deflating a bit, you know, and he started to get a little bit arm weary. And then towards the back end, his corner revved him up. He comes out, and he comes out strong, and he's throwing punches, you know, and trying to win those the back late, the later rounds. And Ford is just staying calm. And, and it almost seemed like he was just like, I'm waiting on the right opportunity to catch him with the right, the perfect shot and hurt him and get him up out of there, man. And, and it was it was a great, great fight, man, at the end of the night. Um, you know. Um, but Tim, my point was, is, is is the scoring, though, and that them understanding, listen, you got to go for it. Because I, I, yeah. I saw the, all, everything you said, too, but I know how judges are. And, you, and if you don't fight for two, minute, two minutes of the round, even if you have a good last minute, a lot of judges are going to lean towards the guy who controlled more of the round. Even though the guy, the judges aren't like us, man. They don't see punches they, like that. They don't, they don't they, understand they, that. No, they're also, right also going to lean towards the A side, too, right, in those stay, situations. Stay right there. Stay, no, but stay right there because that's exactly what happened when I fought against Pacquiao the first time. I'm just going to throw that out there. I fought every type of fought, wait, two minutes and 30 seconds of every single round when I fought him the first time, bro. And yeah. Pacquiao will come on late. Just, yeah, but to, just for your point. Yeah, same, thing, yeah. same thing happened with me and Broner. I, I realized that after the fight, and I thought I told my I told my guys in the corner, I'm like, you got out coach, man, because they, they they clearly had a signal that where he was getting a signal for the last 30 seconds, and he would do nothing for two and a half minutes and then come on in the last 30 seconds for a lot of those, 75% of the rounds we fought that fight that night. And, of course, when 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 judges are leaning politically towards one side, all they need is one little angle. And, yeah. and so it, that's why in the 
helmet off fight Tim. You made a good point. He's, he fought his in enemy territory. So when you have these rounds that could go either way, and there's, a, there's an angle where they could go for the A side, they'll typically go for the A side because they got no character either. All right, if we're talking about past well, fights, if we're, if we're bringing up our past fights, I'm bringing up one of mine too. <laughs> okay, go ahead. The, 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 the Amir Khan fight. I had the idea that Ray, Ray, Ray Ford realized. I was like, I'm going to get him late. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep pushing his ass. I'm going to get him late. I just ran out of time. Ray didn't. Ray, Ray went out there and finished in the last round. I had a strong last round too. But like you said, the A-side champ, everything he did went, went that way. But my yeah. plan in that fight was like, I'm going to start fast, and I'm going to stay in his ass all night long. He's not going to yeah. be able to keep up with me. I'm going to get him late. My yeah. whole plan was, I'm well, going to get you late. But, I just ran but sometimes, these, Guys, sometimes when it comes to these last 30 seconds, sometimes the corners will have a code word they yell out. You know, I think Ray Leonard. I think Ray Leonard. I think Ray Leonard had said he did that with the marvelous, marvelous Marvin Hagler fight as well, where they would, uh, you know, you use a code word. I don't know. It could be anything. You know, it could be something well, that has to do boxing, and that's the word you look for, and you and you shoot your shots. I've seen guys do that. Mine was 10. And it's worked, 10 seconds. And it's worked with uh, thing. Well, 10. Well, even the other guy knows. So you gotta have a code word. But it could be anywhere. It could be at any point during the fight, but it was just the idea is like there's no oh, more 30. time left. Go. Go, oh, for okay. it. Go for it. Hey guys, let's go from that drama, that that inspiring comeback, dramatic win to the zone, Tim. Um, <laughs> what 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 a lot of people saw was something I've never seen. Amanda Serrano pulled out of a fight literally minutes before it was supposed to go on. Just to go back in history for a second, the only thing that I could compare to this way back in 1983 on HBO, Michael Spinks was fighting Eddie Mustafa Muhammad in a rematch. The fight was canceled maybe an hour before, but there was no social media. So people turned on HBO <laughs> and they were told there's going to be no fight tonight because Eddie didn't make weight and the fight was canceled. So you went from this dramatic win, Tim, to the, the theater of the bizarre with Jake Paul stopping a pro fighter in one round and then Amanda Serrano pulling out right before she was supposed to fight. Look, Amanda Serrano's a beast. She, she, no doubt. She, Willing to, she's willing to, to fight anybody, anywhere, you know, do whatever it takes. So she had to be seriously injured. You know, um, I think they waited. I think they waited possibly a little bit too long. Um, I, I think an injury had acquired a couple of days beforehand. Um, like I believe it was on the weigh-ins night. Yes, you do get checked by the doctor. Um, I'm sure she did get checked. They probably said, all right, we'll see how you feel, you know, fight night, see if it gets better. Um, yeah, I think you told me before the show that it was some dye that she got in her eye. That was That's important. what they never really said, but I've heard it was she had her hair dyed on Friday, maybe. Yeah. And she went for a run and some of the, the, the chemicals the dye go, yeah. went into her eye. It's no joke, man. That is no joke. Honestly, it really is. Um, however, um, you know, I, I don't think she just, you know, Toronto is the type of fighter that she, she loves her fans and she wants to put on a show for her fans. You know, if it wasn't severe, honestly, she she would step foot. She would have stepped foot in that ring no, no matter what. But um, I hey, you, if, look, in boxing, you know, you just never know. I mean, there's nothing that surprises me. It was that kind all. of night. But I would say this to promote the promotion side of it. I don't know if they tried to get another opponent for her, uh, for the other girl. I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know her name. And I, I really Manky. don't. However, Manky. Yeah. If they would have got a if they would have got a new opponent for her just so the fans can have a, some sort of an event, you know, they paid for a championship fight. However, they needed to have somebody there uh, to 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 uh, take yeah, the place. And, and Serrano's the A side, yeah, and it was in Puerto Rico. Yeah, so. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man, just to get a little bit of their money's worth. I know they came for Serrano. They got However, a, they got a refund though, champ. Jake Paul gave them they did. gave them the money back. Yeah. 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 So they got a free yeah. night of boxing. Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't, you don't get, you don't get your time back. Yeah, you, you don't your get your time back. back. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. Uh, for uh, for somebody who can actually uh, attest to accessories being an issue in the ring at times, uh, uh, I've I've gone through some of this <laughs> in my career, um, mainly with the hair issues well, in the uh, Love Morendo rematch. An, but issue, also, an issue Tim never had. Uh, oh, but <laughs> but, <laughs> oh. but also some other issues with uh, my pants falling down in the Juan Diaz fight the first time with, with the 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 the, the, uh, the tassels on the shorts were the fringe on the shorts. Were so heavy and water flogged that my shorts kept yeah. falling down and Arthur McCanty Jr. had helped me pull them back up constantly. I mean, I have, I've had accessories issues, so I can tell you. I'll tell you one thing. I think that they couldn't announce it 
right earlier. I know everybody's saying they should have announced it earlier because I think they really were trying to make the fight go ahead the whole time. Oh, yeah. So let's say it's the hair dye, for example. Maybe you're thinking that as a fight gets closer, the hair dye, you know, it's not going to bother you as much, you know? Uh, and maybe it'll, it'll, your eye will clear up. And then you get to the dressing room and you start warming up and the sweat gets more in your eye and all of a sudden it's actually getting worse because now more of the dye is getting in your eye. Only at that point do you realize, well, I'm going to sweat a lot in this fight and more and more of this hair dye is going to get in my eye and I'm going to probably lose this fight because of this. So I, now I can't fight. So you only really in the dressing room is, is it come, does the point come where you realize that due to that particular situation which you've been battling the hair dye are you not going to be able to fight I'll go again to back to a personal experience of mine the, speaking of the first Juan Diaz fight in the first Juan Diaz fight fight week I'm working the pads and there's a miscommunication with my trainer Sharif Yunan I, I, I bob when I weave when I should weave or whatever and, and I get hit with an elbow by my trainer on the pads I got a cut on my left eye if everybody, if anybody can remember that that, that far in the Stone Age, uh, to, to when I fought Juan Diaz the first time, I know it's a long time ago, guys. But I, I got cut in round one, and then I cut Diaz in round two, and we went 12 rounds. That first round cut that I got cut was the cut that I suffered earlier in the week. What we did was we we put the, we bought new glue at at the uh, at, at the pharmacy, and we put wow. makeup on it for the for the weigh-ins and for the physicals, so, they, you know, so nobody could see it, you know. So we put some looks like makeup cover up, you know, and we did all kinds of little surgery with that. And I, all I had to do was get to the first round bell, but you don't. No, at that point, God forbid that cut opens up in the dressing room. I'm not gonna be able to fight. You know what I mean? It's like they, they're gonna they're gonna stop me from fighting from going out to the fight. So there's certain things that okay, we can say, oh, they should have warned and whatnot. I mean, Serrano wanted to fight so badly. She's probably looking for any other any which way she can go to get into yeah. that ring. But it was only until you're in the dressing room warming up at this point where you realize ah, it's not gonna be able to happen. And it's of course you can see the disappointment uh, in the way she was speaking about it afterwards. And credit to Jake Paul for refunding everybody. But of course, you know, you feel for Amanda Serrano because she started yeah. from the very, very humble beginnings in this sport and it's come all the way this far and these are this is probably one of the bucket list dreams that she had yeah headlining in puerto rico you're right chris yeah i mean a cut a cut is one thing right like i'm i'm, I'm not really I, i'm not, i don't i don't care that much about cuts like if you get cut and you go into a fight and you just like i mean either but the care. doctors won't let you fight no no, no 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 i mean i mean in general for fighters like mm -hmm. i don't because cuts are, are it's superficial it's skin mm -hmm. yeah it's gonna bleed out it's gonna look mm -hmm. bad you know unless we're talking about like really deep cuts where we're yeah, talking about mine cutting, was on my eyebrow we're so talking the, about cutting into musculature we're talking about nerve damage mm -hmm. then yeah okay i understand mm -hmm. why you stop a fight but you cut. gotta understand it could affect the result if she goes into the fight she can't see if i go if i'm cut over my eye i'm speaking purely from the fighter amanda would want to fight but this is different. This is vision. Yeah. Vision is a very different thing. We, we uh, listen. As uh, from medical professionals, we have trouble fixing eyes. Eye, eye damage is is really serious. Surgery on eyes are are, are iffy. We've gotten much better in terms of uh, of modern medicine, but eyes yeah. are tough. Yeah. And vision is your number one defense in boxing, man. If you can't see the punches, you, you can't, can't deliver the punches. Yeah. They always say that you can't fight. The way to the way to the way to quiet quit in a fight. Say you can't see. As soon as you say you can't see, the fight's over. Yeah, yeah quite Because quite, vision yeah. is that important. So I really feel for her. Like, she's someone who definitely wanted to fight, I'm sure. But listen, if you can't see like you were talking yeah. about, if you're, if you're warming up, you're hitting pads. And you don't want to go out into the ring like that. Because then, then you once really you're hurt. in the ring, it's a loss if you can't see. Yes. You know what I mean? That's, so that's you'd rather you not rid. even risk that. You it's know? also three 12-minute rounds. Yeah. So this is three minute rounds. This is 12 yeah. three minute rounds, yeah. excuse me. So it's a, no, it's a much longer. She's only been she there, had, she only she, done that once. She had no choice. You she's could only see done that she once. That's a long time to go into a, a ring without being yeah, able to see. You could see she wanted to do this so of badly. I mean, it's just, it's, that's, that's heartbreaking. The accessories, man, I tell you, they'll get you. The accessories, man. And as, bad, and as bad as that was, <laughs> the other fight was so good. Top right, that, that top yeah. right fight, that Ray yeah. Ford fight was so good. Peter! I didn't even deal. I didn't even deal with this Amanda <laughs> Serrano thing until yesterday because I was so I was so yeah. happy about this. Theater of the unexpected. Anything guys. Happen, both ends always. Boxing is balanced. Well, I I dealt with it that night, Chris, because I watched the fight both. on ESPN. Then I flipped over to D to DAZN and I saw that whole debacle unfold. But yeah, you guys are right. Amanda Sor Amanda Serrano has been a warrior, and there's no doubt she wanted to fight. There's no doubt. Really quick, Tim, I'll let you have the last word. We've only got about 20 seconds. Jake Paul, what did he do for his future in that fight? Oh, I hope he gets in the rankings. <laughs> That's what I hope. I hope Jake Paul gets in the rankings, man. You know, we've been we've been talking about Jake Paul fighting against MMA guys and fighting against celebrities, and now he's starting to fight boxers, and he's starting to knock these boxers out. I mean, you know, you got to start paying attention to Jake Paul, whether you think he's real or not. I'm telling you right now, he's real. He got some. He got to. He got some fight in him. He does, and he's getting better and better. And this is just another showing of him. You know, and his maturity in this game. And little by little, he's going to continue to get better over the years and over the years. And I, I, I can't wait to see him in the rankings. I, I really can't, man. But uh, I thought it was a great knockout from him. Um, a great showing once a, once again. And uh, I want to see more. All right. Well, what a, what a night Saturday night. Had a little bit of everything. 
listen, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Pro Box TV is on YouTube. We've got 95,000 subscribers. We're so close to 100,000. So make sure you subscribe. Next Wednesday, we have another Wednesday Night Fights on Pro Box TV. And remember that Pro Box TV is your boxing channel.